I'm going to do a little walking tour of the workroom just to show you some of my favorite essential machines and tools that I use on a daily basis, starting with the table. So I have a 12 foot long work table by five foot wide with a gridded tabletop that I got from Raleigh. And it has one inch lines vertically and horizontally with darker black lines every 10 inches. And it's one of my most necessary tools that I've grown to rely on. There's a million reasons why it's important, but um, we'll leave it there for now and get into that in future videos. Here's some of my other favorite smaller tools. Rulers of every type, 60 inch metal ruler. I have two of those and then two 48 inch metal rulers and an L square and a smaller L square, small six inch, 12 inch that has the numbers just about wore off. An 18 inch ruler comes in handy. Of course, a yardstick, mostly used for smoothing out fabrics. This is a quilting six, six inch plastic see-through ruler, six inch by 24, very handy. Uh, of course, a soft tape. Stapler, graph paper, pins, calculators, scissors of all kinds, these uh, green handle ergonomic scissors from Wolf are pretty comfortable and durable. They come in uh, different blade lengths, left and right handed, and different, we have some that have different angles for different cutting situations, I guess I would say. Um, and then I have this rack at the end where you can put a tube of fabric on here and unroll it easily as you're measuring for cutting. cart here with all kinds of little things that I use daily or weekly. One of my favorite tools is the staple puller. That, that's really handy. And a hammer, some uh, chalk, dressmaker's chalk, calculator, all kinds of clamps. All kinds of little tools down here. And then strings and cords and zippers. Then we have 
the sewing machines. This is a walking foot sewing machine. So it's a heavy duty, more of an upholstery weight sewing machine. And then all the feet that you could possibly need. I have a little plastic separator here because each foot is, is a set of two pieces. So this is a double welt foot and it's for a one quarter inch welt, DW for double welt. So you need this little piece for the middle and then this part on the outside. And then different size for single welt. This was this is a three eighth inch welt foot. And then we have compensating feet. And some are left handed, some are right handed, and then different sizes. One eighth, one quarter, three sixteenth. And then we have a zipper foot here combo a left and a right so definitely a foot for every situation or a set of feet and then um, you know your bobbins nippers Shelves with all kinds of um, other supplies, a roll of zippers in every color, white. I don't know if they call that beige or tan. Black down here. Drawers for little pieces. Some gimp, sausage weight, more rulers. Buckram up here. Stack of Dufix, some books. And then here we have the US blind stitch for side hems. Bottom hems. I keep a box of weights ready to go. These are all the Badges I have worn to different expos and conferences over the years. Some fun little Snoopy dolls. Pencil sharpener. I have a bin of clothes pins up here for pinch pleats. An extra iron. Of course, all the threads. And then here is the serger. Four thread Juki serger. Definitely invaluable. And then the regular straight stitch. This is the newest addition to my fleet of sewing machines. I'm so excited to show you. It's a tacker for tacking pinch pleats like these here. This one is ready to go. And it's a kind of a modified tacker where normally you would use this machine to tack buttons. And you can see on this little guide, you can do two hole buttons here or four hole buttons. But um, the machine has been modified for specifically drapery tacking. So this big plate is now what would normally come with it. It would come with something that would hold a button. 
but they um, have custom made this huge massive plate so that when you're tacking and you put the pleat underneath it it holds it nice and nice and firmly so it doesn't move around and then the tack just goes right through with that with little effort from the machine so I'll show you how that works and just got it yesterday so I'm super excited to be able to put it in the video these are two finger euro pleats so that means they're tacked at the top and there's enough room underneath this bar to do definitely a thicker pleat or a three finger pleat and then once I step on the pedal, this big bar will come down and it'll stitch the tack. Just like that. And it cuts the thread and everything. I still have to cut the tail off, but it cuts the thread so that I can release it without having an extra step of cutting. gravity feed iron which means the water comes through a hose that is connected to the ceiling and holds over a gallon of water which it's at the low level now so I know I need to fill it there's a minimum water line and uh, so I, I can use this iron for a week or so without filling the tank. Yeah. It gets very, very hot, of course, on the bottom. So it sets on these silicone plates just to protect the table. Um, it comes with one, but in my experience, one is not enough because it will still uh, mar the table if it sits there for any length of time. So I've started stacking up two or three to really protect the table. And then uh, the other thing you need for sure is a shoe. So this is basically a protector. Uh, it's Teflon coated and it glides smoothly over fabrics. And it lets the steam from the iron go through the little holes but it, what it does is it protects the fabric because this uh, bottom of the iron will burn a hole right through some fabrics. It's, it gets so hot. So this protects the fabric from getting um, burnt to a crisp or actually melting. I have seen that happen. So all you do is slide the iron into the shoe under the spring, clip it in place, and you're ready to iron your fabric and it's totally protected. This will get hot, so you cannot touch it once the iron is on, but right now it's off. That's why I can touch it. So you wanna make sure you um, put that together before you turn it on. And then once you are ready to use it, you can turn it on and then wait until this light goes off because otherwise, if you start pushing the steam button right here, before the iron is hot, that's what this light means. It means that the iron is not hot yet, it's still cool to the touch. So if I was to press this button right now, it would pull water through the water hose from the tank above, and it would pull out cold water, and the water would go all over the table. It's only going to make steam when this iron is hot. So you definitely wanna wait until this light goes off, that means the iron is hot, you won't be able to touch it then. And then you'll be free to push that button and the steam will come through the plate and create beautiful presses. And I can feel the table's getting warm now. So you wanna make sure after you turn it on that you leave it on these silicone plates. And then the uh, tray right here I use Often when I'm working on 
fabrics that take up the whole table. I can get the iron off the table, but still have it handy. And then I can push it around the table so I can get to it when I need it. Those are a few of my favorite tools in the workroom. Some samples of uh, drapery hardware and then some drapery samples here. I have this really cool wall organizer full of bins that are called acro bins, A-K-R-O, acro bins. And they're really helpful for organizing all the little parts and pieces that we use. These are clutch parts for Roman shades, brackets, chain. I have buttons, big buttons, brads for the nail gun, nail heads and all kinds of colors and sizes. I love nail heads, so this is a really great organizer for all the nail heads that I keep in stock. And then drapery hooks. And these bins come off of here really easily, and they hold a lot of weight. So it's really convenient to take down one bin at a time as you need it. And they come in so many different uh, widths and lengths. This little guy has some anchors in it. And I have a few more spots so I can get a couple more. And then the part that goes on the wall, you can um, add them up. This is two different sections that I mounted on top of each other. So you can just do one section, or in this case, I did two. You could do three. Um, and they come in different colors. I just went with the black and the red. And then I need to label the fronts of them still because it's hard from down low to see what's in them. So that's very cool. I'm happy with that. Keeps me organized. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end. I know it was long and filled with lots of information, so hopefully you uh, picked up a few tips on equipment that you might want to add to your workshop and uh, if you have any questions let me know in the comments and i will try to answer as best i can thanks again for watching and uh, subscribe and like if you want to see more videos like this and if you have any other video ideas that you'd like to see put those down in the comments also and I'll try my best to add, add that to my list of future videos. Thanks again.